A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to this Saturday's edition of Scoreline. My name is Robinson Okenye. For the next one hour, of course, we take a look at the latest in the world of sports. Remember, today we are in Naivasha, Nakuru County, and it's all about the 2024 edition of uh, the WRC Safari Rally. Now, yesterday we had... Uh, very, very interesting action on day two of uh, the safari. Remember, at the end of the day, it was 2022 champion uh, Kalero Van Pera from uh, Finland taking uh, the lead uh, for the night. Uh, today, they are covering three stages. That is Suisambu, Sleeping Warrior, and Almentaita. And the rains uh, that were experienced uh, yesterday night uh, probably might uh, uh, give uh, the drivers a myriad of challenges uh, before the end of uh, the day. And probably in the afternoon, uh, if we get to experience more rains, then uh, it will be a totally different uh, story. Now, I want us to roll it back to yesterday. We take a look at uh, the highlights uh, from uh, the action uh, from uh, day two where Kalero and Pera um, uh, rather got uh, the overnight lead. Day two in Kenya started with a bang. Toyota's Elgin Evans and Kalero and Pera both suffered punctures through the day's first test. But while the Welshman dropped a chunk of time, Rov and Pera managed the issue brilliantly bringing home the stage win and taking the rally lead. Though remained frustrated. I don't want to say any really bad words, but it was horrible. The car is understeering so much that I don't understand how we can do any time on the stage. It was horrible. Championship leaders Thierry Nerville and Martin Vediger also suffered a delamination through geothermal one, losing significant time to Robin Perra. The car was showing me two punctures so on the rear, so... I don't know it's true, but it felt like on the real level it was still okay. Running repairs enabled the crew to keep going, but the duo had to don goggles through the following stage to combat the build-up of dust inside the car. The safari took its next victim on stage five, Esa Pekalapi stopping with a damaged transmission. And without spares, the Rally Sweden winner would be forced to retire his I-20. And Hyundai's fortunes didn't improve on stage six. Oh, oh big bang! Let's take a little look at it again. So this is all fairly normal. He's going to get on the brakes for the left-hander and bang, there it is. There is Oitanak and there is the front left looking very sorry for itself. Yeah, that's where he's hit the bank on the far side. In WRC2, top sports Gus Greensmith was in fine form in his first rally of the season. The Brit taking big time through the morning loop and ending stage four a whopping two minutes and 20 seconds ahead of second place Charles Munster. The 27-year-old exhausted and looking forward to a well-deserved rest. This afternoon's been the toughest afternoon I've ever had in running. I'm absolutely exhausted. I was trying to stand out the car before I was looking left. <laughs> I need a bed. <laughs> the WRC2 Championship co-leader Oliver Solberg had a less enjoyable morning with punctures on both stages three and four, seeing the Swede drop over three minutes, 30 seconds, behind his top sport Skoda teammate. Light rain before the day's end added an extra challenge. Damp sections through the 31 kilometer Kidong two stage caught out Evans, who ended the day with damage to the rear of his Yaris. On the rear right. On the bumper. Yeah. Uh, touched maybe something with the rear left, but not the rear right. But nobody can match Rob and Perra. A true masterclass outfront. The Finn winning all six of the day stages to earn an overnight lead of nearly a minute. Yeah, I have to be happy with that. The condition started to be quite rough. So I think from every card it goes a bit deeper in places. I would have loved to go even faster, but at this point... This now, rally driver Baldev Chaga, as a popular Kenyan rally driver, is... Uh, not taking or is not officially taking part uh, in the rally, but he's involved in the rally. We got a chance of speaking to him on, uh, you know, what uh, the rally this year is all about and uh, who probably th he thinks uh, will win. And uh, remember, he's uh, uh, driving car number zero in this rally, clearing the way for other drivers. So let's listen. In. I'm kind of sort of semi-retired, uh, just just done it for 30 years so we've been called upon by the wrc team uh, to actually do something called a zero car which means the first car that takes off before the first wrc car into the stage so which is actually a very important job um, i believe they choose us because of the experience that we have and we will be driving a mitsubishi evo 10 today uh, tried and tested uh, car for africa um, 
our job is actually not to to drive super fast our job is to make sure uh, the stages are very safe to run spectators are in the right positions uh, just in case there's an incident or a car uh, veers off the road uh, spectators are not hurt uh, because spectators tend to to have a terrible habit of really trying to be as close as possible to the road uh, spectators cameramen um, we also have to look at uh, various things like animals, uh, public traffic, if there is anything, even on the main roads, leave alone the stages. Uh, so our job is actually quite critical. Um, we're always on uh, radio communication with the uh, HQ as we're driving, so we really have to do a lot of multitasking. Um, so that's why we still have a co-driver, Gareth. So we're actually doing the whole rally at almost rally speed, but we don't get classified at the end of the rally. We're actually here to, to do a job and that's what it is. So uh, looking at this terrain, uh, with the challenges it poses, so uh, do you think this would be an advantage to the Kenya drivers? Um, not really. If this was the first WRC, I'd say yes. Uh, but now this is our fourth WRC. Uh, the WRC boys have been here already for three years. They've seen it all, so they know what to expect. It's the same stages, same surfaces. And they know when it rains how things change so they're they're much more prepared three years of doing the event uh so our local boys <coughs> to be fair i don't think against the wrc1 cars have no chance but if you look at the wrc2 category um of course my favorite uh, would be carl tundo an old uh, very good friend of mine who we raced against forever in in the national series and uh, for, from the locals i think he will give all the international boys a hard time but um, yeah, that's about it in, in, in WRC2. Uh, then you have Karan Patel, who is also up there. And those are the two, two boys who might make an impact uh, in, in that uh, category of vehicles. So let me talk to our fans and, and uh, supporters. Uh, just to encourage them to come to this event and experience this feeling. Yeah, um, even for me, to be, to be very fair, watching this WRC car is... is is so exciting it's so phenomenal the the sound the speed the 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 action the dust this you you think it's so rough and they're going to slow down here and suddenly you, they don't even lift off um if you like cars and if you like speed then wrc kenya is a must watch Baldev Chaga giving his views on uh, the Safari Rally this year. Now, yesterday there was an autograph signing done here in uh, Naivasha and uh, w, uh, brother Safari Rally CEO Charles Agasheru says that uh, the Safari Rally is not only for the fans uh, to come and witness what uh, the drivers have uh, to do behind the wheels. It's also uh, meant uh, to imp uh, rather boost economic growth uh, of uh, Kenya and also it's at an avenue rather for talent and development let's listen in to the ugandan fans huge contingent of ugandan fans at kedong right now um hopefully there are more coming tomorrow for day two uh but so far excellent turnout um the rally really the safari rally 2024 is on calling to everybody out there in nairobi nakuru yeah come and spend your easter right here in Naivasha. you can easily commute traffic is under control come and spend your easter with us here at the wrc safari rally Eastern Rally. Karibuni. Uh, the, the rally is important for many things. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously motorsport for the motorsport enthusiasts. They are very clear. They're here for the machines and the rallying and they can speak all the language. But this is about trade and tourism. This is about making it Kenya. This is about magical Kenya. This is about selling our country globally. This is about foreign direct investments. You know, we are, we are being seen globally. So it's just not about tourism. It's also about the inflows of dollars into our nation. These events are not just about the sport. You know, these are much more. Trade here in Naivasha. Trade in the periphery of Nakuru County. Trade in Nairobi. The inflow of foreign exchange. The teams, the drivers, and so on and so forth. So yes, the base is the sport. But on that base is built a, a vibrant economy, talent development, uh, dollar inflows for a direct investment and really our brand getting more currency globally. That's what this is about. Millions and millions of fans around the world are following this race, this rally around the world. And all those eyeballs translate into more tourism, more trade and investment in our nation.
Now, Kenyan rally driver Nikhil Sachania and his navigator Deep Patel have assured Kenyans that uh, they will continue, uh, rather they will continue rallying despite uh, their Mitsubishi Evolution X uh, crashing uh, yesterday in uh, the Safari Rally. To be quite honest, we started off the day very well. From yesterday, transitioning into today, Loldia was very rocky, very rutty. Um, we passed Loldia, went to geothermal, the stage was absolutely fine for us. Um, coming to Kidong, uh, we, we were flying through the stage, to be quite honest. Um, uh, close to about 24 kilometers in to the stage, um, there was a one kilometer straight, um, so foot was flat on the, on the pedal. Uh, it was one kilometer, I believe it was a three left into Hep and right. Um, uh, I called the 800 at the 800 mark, but we had lost our brakes by then. Um, we tried to tap on the handbrake a bit to see if we can slow down. Unfortunately, the car went into a barrel roll. Uh, we rolled, I believe, seven to eight times. Um, but thank God that uh, Nikhil and I are out. Um, right now we're at the KCB den. Absolutely amazing atmosphere over here. Um, but yeah, it's Nashukuru Mungu we're here. What next? Um, we will look for another car. We will upgrade the car. Uh, the car is still in the stage right now. I'm sure it's pretty badly damaged. Um, but yeah, we'll get the car back to service. And then now we just slowly start building and seeing what options we have for, for another car. We can't uh, stop rallying. Uh, we will be back. We'll be back. Now, remember today the drivers are covering uh, three stages. So Isambu, Sleeping Warrior and uh, Earl Mantaita. We had a chance of speaking to them uh, so that we can get to hear how they maneuvered uh, through the three stages uh, with uh, the rains that we had yesterday and probably what uh, to expect uh, in the afternoon if the conditions are probably remain the same or if we witness uh, rainfall. This is what the drivers had to say quite uh, entertaining to be honest so uh, yeah it was a bit busy before the stage and we had uh, plenty of work to do so uh, yeah we were a bit tight on the time and, and seems like we made a mistake with uh, with the bonnet so uh, one win was not attached correctly and, and uh, yeah we, we had to stop in the stage to, to put it back in to not run into some other trouble yeah and in sleeping warrior we had quite a uh, quite uh, quite a struggle with them there were somehow uh, loads of them and, and in the longest uh, straight of the stage so yeah it was it took some time there to, to get through uh, middle stage also some but but i mean yeah it's it's adventure yeah good morning for us um challenging conditions out there lots of lots of punctures for the other competitors we try to be careful uh, and, and and very smooth in those sections and we we obviously didn't have a puncture this morning, but uh, I mean, uh, yeah, the rally is still long this afternoon, anything can happen. So yeah, we take uh, the two positions from this morning and we're going to try to defend them this afternoon. Yeah, if it's raining, it's going to be a huge challenge. I mean, uh, usually we have had rain in the, uh, in the in Sleeping Warrior only. Um, it could be even more rain in other stages as well this afternoon. So um, that's going to make it really challenging. Yes. Uh, there are nice stages. I mean, obviously there are, amongst the most challenging stages in the in the season but uh, they are nice and it's a beautiful landscape and the driving is really enjoyable but for sure with the rain hits um, it's going to be a different story. Uh, not too bad I really enjoyed the driving the car was the car was working better than before we, we did something some big change yesterday for the setup which in theory shouldn't work but in real life it seems to work very well um, so i'm very satisfied for the car now actually and opening the road was not that bad you know um, but in the other hand we suffered every stage of puncture so this was limiting the times a bit and yeah we need to we needed to manage the road section now come to come back here with uh, with the empty tires but but yeah we did it and in the end the punctures doesn't really matter in big pictures so. uh, maybe they are more smooth <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know actually uh, it's it's sometimes also a bit faster maybe it's not so soft in the places I, I don't know why um, for me it doesn't actually matter is it yesterday or today I don't really yeah they are different type of stages but still I I like both both days any change of tactics probably in the afternoon for you? Uh, yeah, let's see if we continue. I mean, it's, uh, or should we save the car for tomorrow? Well, yeah, that's always very unfortunate. I, 
I really break down a lot when I saw them and then, you know, I, I saw them passing and okay, now it's my spot to go through, but then one was still, there was one left. Um, and yeah, unfortunately we, we hit that one. It's, I guess it's part of the, this safari experience, you know, when we are first car on the road, we, we might face these kind of elements, but it's not nice to, to hit such a beautiful animal. Well, today is much warmer than yesterday, uh, so so conditions are a bit crazy. Uh, the grip is changing a lot, etc. I'm happy with what we are doing. We stick to the plan uh, now, and uh, we are fourth overall, so it's quite uh, it's quite positive. Uh, we have a quite good gap with uh, Elfin behind, and the podium is not so far. So, with the things can happen can happen so quickly, we never know what happens. So, so it's positive. It's a big challenge this race because we really have to push some time and slow down so in some other places. The rain is coming and when the rain comes, it's, it's like ice. And we have seen this morning in some uh, muddy section, it's really, really slippery. So we'll see this afternoon, the rain is probably coming. So it's quite dark over there, so we'll see. Which conditions do you prefer normally? Well, it's easier to drive on the dry. <laughs> but many things happen more often on the, on the wet. So to be fair, I just wait and we'll see. Um, it was good morning, I would say, quite steady driving and uh, trying to avoid the risks what we could. And then, uh, yeah, just uh, clean driving, no mistakes, keeping the, the tires and the car in one piece. Uh, it was just a few sections with, uh, what uh, were muddy, so it was not so bad, but I think the afternoon can be difficult if the rain comes. Um, yeah, it's uh, difficult stages, uh, so I think it's just uh, the challenge is the biggest enjoyment. Yeah, uh, it started pretty well, but then um, second one, there was uh, many difficulties with anti -rock, anti cut rocks and I had to avoid a lot, but uh, time was still not too bad. So I wanted to focus for the last one, but then unfortunately uh, we expected can happen this puncture because this new section is ra very random locks and uh, even those sections are not exact same for as we seen on the lake that the rocks are moved a lot so it was very hard to know where is the rocks are where is not and unfortunately we got the double puncture and also other drivers as well so it was very difficult and quite rotary stage yeah this stage is always very difficult but not only sleeping warrior other sta two stages also very demanding and difficult so luckily i have not seen yet any animals on the stage so this is still quite a big help for me, but I have seen more locks than animals, so this is a problem. <laughs> yes, after that, what should you expect uh, if it rains? Will it be challenging? Yeah, big, big challenge. Will be, I'm pretty sure, going to be completely mess. I mean, will be very difficult. Would you like to encounter any animals? Sorry? Would you like to encounter any animals? Oh, uh, no, I saw a giraffe once. Yes. Yeah, it was really big. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I see you now. Okay, okay. Keep it. Now, and just to digress a bit, we get into some uh, beach games and the National Olympic Committee of Kenya is 